If your mix bus is clipping at all throughout your mix, then you probably didn't gain stage correctly. This video is going to explain everything about gain staging, what it is, how to use it, and also the value of gain staging throughout your entire mix to end up with the best and most professional mix possible. Welcome to Dinosaur Dog Studio. My name is Tyson. I'm a mastering engineer over at Night Owl Music Group, and Dinosaur Dog Studio exists to share my knowledge about mixing, how to do it correctly, and how to get ultimately more professional mixes. I'm sharing every Everything that I've learned over the last 16 years of mixing music so that you don't have to go through the same struggle as I did learning this skill of professional mixing. So let's dive into topic of today, which is gain staging and ultimately why you should not ignore this very, very critical component of mixing. All right, so let's dive into gain staging. What is gain staging? That's the first question. But before I define that, I do need to dive into the difference between gain versus volume. So gain versus volume is incredibly important to understand because it's very, very confusing and they're often used inter interchangeably, but they are not the same thing. However, the same part of the process could at one point be described as volume and at another point be described as gain. So let's break this down exactly why that is the case. So gain at the simple functional definition is the amount of signal going into a process, whether that's EQ, compression, distortion, your guitar amp, your preamp, anything, any sort of processing, gain is the volume or gain is the signal, excuse me, signal strength going into that process. Volume is what's coming out of that process. So again, this is why at my EQ say, I can say, okay, I have gain of minus 10 decibels going into my EQ, and then I have 10 decibels of volume coming out. So after my EQ, the vo that's volume, but then the compression is next, and I can say I have now 10 decibels of gain going into my compression. So at that same point in the process, could be described as volume or gain, depending on the context that's surrounding it. So the goal of this process of gain staging, diving back to gain staging, is that our gain going into a, a signal in a process is the same as the volume coming out of it. This creates a consistency, a continuity of our mixes to ensure that, say, we have a volume balance that we set up at the very beginning. We don't want that to be, or we don't want to mess that up by adding volume or taking away volume throughout the process of processing these tracks with EQ, compression, distortion, whatever process that we do inside of the mix. Again, this can be described as the entire signal chain, so uh, the gain going into the signal chain, and then all of the, you know, say, three or four plugins we have on the signal chain, and then the volume coming out of it. That is a legitimate use of this terminology. But then so is the gain going into a specific compressor or a specific EQ. And ultimately, the goal is always the same, is to have the same amount of gain going in as coming out on volume from the signal the next question we have to ask ourselves is, are we using average volume or peak volume to measure the gain and the volume? So average, the difference between the two is, first of all, the average volume is taking into the measurement over time. So it's taking into account the peak volume, but also all of the tails of the notes as well. Whereas peak volume is only measuring the very, very peak of the note, wherever it's loudest. And so the, um, a track could be, say, sitting at minus 15 decibels the whole time and then all of a sudden there's just one really loud transient that happens to peak and you know is peaking at say minus one decibel so there's a difference of minus four uh, of there's a difference of 14 decibels between the peak and the true average of the track and average volume by and large is the safer measurement to use because that's really what humans are hearing when we're listening to a track. That's kind of the act, actual loudness of a track is the average volume. So I, generically speaking, I would lean towards using average volume overall, but honestly, both can be used in most contexts, except for a few, which I'm going to mention later. Um, but for EQ, for just normal gain staging, both of these are acceptable measurements. You can use either one. Where do we want to actually gain stage? There are four main areas that we want to ensure that we are gain staging properly. The first area is the raw tracks. And so the raw tracks is going to be before we really start mixing, we want to gain stage all of the individual tracks inside of our mix to ensure that they're ready before we even volume balance. The next one is EQ. So we want to make sure that we're not adding or removing too much 
volume or gain through with any of our EQ processing to ensure that we can actually, one, objectively measure whether we did a good thing or not, because things that are louder tend to sound better. So we don't want to just having boosted the, you know, three kilohertz range on our guitars. We don't want to just assume that that sounds better because it's louder. We want to gain stage that to ensure that the overall balance that we changed is indeed what we wanted to with our EQ. The next area we want to gain stage is compression. This is where gain staging gets really confusing at times. And so I'm going to do my best to make simplify that and make it very easy for you to gain stage with your compression. Um, but this, the reason why it's confusing is because compression is actually changing the relationships between the peaks and the valleys of a track and therefore is going to mess essentially with some of those measurements of RMS versus peak volume. And those are going to change based on what type of compression we're using. So again, I'm going to cover all of that as well in this video. And then the last one is effects. How do we gain stage effects when we're adding effects to our tracks? Let's dive into the first one, gain staging raw tracks. So why would we want to even gain stage our raw tracks? There's a few very specific reasons why we want to do this. The first one being mix bus volume. So what we don't want to happen is we want, don't want to dive into our mix and we just start mixing right away. We get our volume balance. We start processing EQ, compression, etc. And then all of a sudden we realize our mix bus is peaking and maybe clipping within our mix. This is one of the worst things to happen because then we have to go backwards inside of our mix to adjust all of the individual volumes of our tracks. And that could then impact, say, a compressor that we have set up on our drum bus. So then we have to adjust the volume and then we have to adjust the the input and the ratio and the the threshold on our drum bus and then remember to do that for the vocal bus as well etc so it just creates a whole bunch of issues that we don't want to have to deal with later in the mix and so by setting up our gain staging with our raw tracks first we always have a measurement we essentially have a way to ensure that our mix bus volume is always going to be at a very very good level there's an ideal gain for plugins and that ideal is actually minus 12 decibels. So if we have our tracks going into these processes at minus 12 decibels, all of a sudden we are these actual plugins are going to react in the best way possible to those to that signal because these were designed based on real life analog gear. And there was essentially a difference based on how much gain is going into this. So think about a guitar amp, right? There's an ideal gain, depending on your goal with your guitar amp, of how the tubes react to the gain going into those tubes. That's why the gain and volume are different on your guitar amp. And so the processing is reacts differently based on how much gain I go in. So if I want more distortion, I'm going to add more gain into going into the tubes in my guitar amp. And so this is very similar to this piece, these pieces of gear as well. They're going to react differently based on how much gain is going in. The objective ideal that the plugin manufacturers intended for these plugins to react at is minus 12 decibels. So if we have, if we meet that range or we're right around that, then we have the essentially ideal processing and therefore our tracks are going to sound slightly better after each individual plugin. And because we use so many plugins throughout the mix, it's going to make a significant difference by the end. While it's difficult to hit this exact ideal every single time, minus 12 decibels, the rule of thumb that I like to use is we want everything to be between minus 10 and minus 20 decibels. And this is peak volume for our tracks. But if we just use this general rule of thumb when we're gain staging our raw tracks, they're all going to relatively be within that range of close to the ideal. And obviously these tracks are not going to be perfectly consistent all the way through unless we're using samples or something. But most of our tracks, like our vocal, is not going to be always minus 12 decibels. And so we want to just hit that range with our raw tracks. And therefore, we're going to end up with a far more professional sounding mix by the end because our plugins are reacting to the tracks the way that they were intended to. OK, so let's dive into the DAW, show you exactly how to gain stage your mix with your raw tracks. Here we are in the DAW. And the very first thing is we want to hit that minus 20 to minus 10 range with all of our tracks at a macro level. So the entire track or the entire region should be hitting that measurement. So here is the kick. And all I'm doing is I'm going to look at the fader down here on the 
left, the bottom left here, and see where it's at when it's at minus zero. So I need to make sure that all these are at minus zero. Excuse me, minus zero? What, what am I talking about? At union, at zero decibels, <laughs> when the fader is there, we want these to be between that minus 20 and minus 10. Okay, so let's let's look at our fader down here. Okay, this is almost perfect already. I'm just gonna gain it down at one decibel. All right, that's perfect. And this is not like a super scientific thing. I'm just gonna move here pretty quickly. As a minus six again, let's move that down just a little bit. Looks like it was already gain staged. All right, and then go to our tom. All right, so minus, let's move that up by 10. Yeah, there we go. Um, tom two, I don't even know if I hit that one. Oh, I, it is there, okay. So it's a minus 32, so that means like 20. Oh, that's a little too much. All right. So again, uh, moving very quickly here. That might have been too much there. I don't think I hit the hats at all. All right, so that's a uh, really good range. That's really quiet. Yeah, too much. All right, that's looking good. Yeah, that's good. Bass. Okay, speaking of minus three, so let's bring that down by seven. Rhythm guitar. That's a good range. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna bring that down by two just so it matches the other guitar. It'll make it easier to volume balance that. That's good. That's good. Yep, okay, those are all good. Lead vocal. I don't care, so never mind. I don't care, so never mind. So as you can tell, that's almost not even reaching the the kind of measurement. It's going down to about minus 20 at its lowest, but I see some louder peaks here. Already moving. So that's actually peaking above it. So there's actual additional work that we need to do here that I'm gonna cover in a second. Um, but the overall gain staging is, is relatively accurate. So um, last one I'm gonna do is all of these. I'm gonna do these as a group, just to be efficient here. Never mind. All right. Um. Never mind. And I don't care if you say I do. No. All right, so they're all a little bit loud. Let's just gain them all down by about six decibels. I was never mind. And I don't need never mind. And I don't care if you say I do. No. All right, there we go. And that is gain staging raw tracks. So now all of our tracks are at a very consistent uh, volume to one another, or rather a consistent gain going into all of our processing that we're going to be adding here in just a minute. So the next reason why we gain stage our raw tracks is it's the first level of dynamic control. So let's dive into the DAW and show you exactly this. Then you're probably already producing and mixing your own music. And if you're unable to get that professional sheen or quality or vibe for your songs, then I want to let you in on a little secret. Most mixers are trying to compensate their lack of professional mixes by getting more plugins, by using more advanced tips or tricks or techniques in their mixes, or relying on buying more professional gear in order to compensate for their lack of quality mixes. But in reality, most mixers core problem is actually mixing subjectively or approaching mixing from just a creative mindset entirely. Obviously mixing is still a somewhat of a creative skill. It's actually far more objective than most people realize. Because if we think about it, everyone agrees on what a professional mix actually is. If that 
weren't the case, then it would be an entirely subjective field. But in reality, mixing is actually incredibly objective because everyone agrees on what a pro song sounds like. And so mixing objectively can actually help you avoid being your own worst enemy inside of your mixes and ultimately allow you to just check all of the boxes that a professional mix should check. And then your mix will sound objectively professional. And so if you're mixing your own music and you're motivated to actually learn the objective skill of mixing, and if you want to ensure that your music sounds pro, then I would love to help you out by teaching you the, the five objective standards that everybody is judging your mix by and how you can use objective mixing to solve those five problems inside of your mix. And then also how to do all of that in under three hours per song without pro gear, premium plugins or utilizing templates or presets. So this is something that piques your interest Then go to theobjectivemix.com to order my brand new book, The Objective Mix. This will teach you how to mix objectively professional mixes every single time you sit down to mix. This provides you with my entire mixing workflow along with all of the breakthrough lessons that I've learned in the last 16 years of mixing music. So if that is interesting to you at all, then again, go to theobjectivemix.com or click the link right below this video. Can't wait to see you on the inside. With that, let's get back to the video. So as I mentioned earlier, the vocal needed some more work and this is going to be our first level of dynamic control and so before we start adding compressors or anything we want to gain stage individual parts of a track or region potentially so as you can see here this vocal take is very dynamic so we have a really loud note right here and then right after that, we have some quieter notes and then we have another loud note, right? So these are the types of things that we're going to be adjusting in this stage. So I'm going to be taking um, anything that's really loud. I'm just going to chop that out, chop this one out and probably these two notes as well. And I'm going to gain stage those down just a little bit. So it's more even with the rest of the track. Um, this part is a little quiet, so we're going to bring that up. And you can get as specific as you want with this. Pretty detail-oriented when it comes to gain staging our vocal here. This whole section is a little quiet. Beginning is a little extra quiet. Let's see, is there anything else that pops out? And again, I'm just doing this visually for the most part because I can just see, you know, where it, where it's probably too quiet and then I'll double check by listening to it. Okay, so now let's listen to the vocal here. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. Okay, so as you notice, there's a little bunch of like clips, clicks, clicks and pops in that section right there um, because I didn't crossfade this, which I'm going to here in a second. I just wanted to point that out. I thought you were done with me. So this this section right here though sounds a little bit quiet, so I'm gonna move bump that up again. You were done with me so now. Yeah, okay, so that's better. And then I would go through and do the whole track, but just for brevity's sake, we're just gonna crossfade all of that. So now I have nice crossfades. Uh, make sure you have your drag function. If you're in Logic, make sure you, this is set to crossfade. Otherwise, that move that I just made won't work. You just select everything and just drag it over, and then it'll create crossfades for you. So um, that prevents all those like clicks and pops that you heard. So let's listen to it again. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. Yes, yeah, so there's a little bit more dynamic variation than I would like there. Um, might adjust some of these. It's not too much. You were done with me, so never mind. It's not too much. Stupid. So this is essentially how you gain stage your vocal. Um, already this vocal is a lot more dynamically consistent. Obviously, there's another layer that we can add on with compression, and we definitely will be doing that later in the mix. But this is our first defense, our first line of defense to ensure that our vocal is going to be consistent, dynamically consistent and right up front and powerful the way that we want it to in the mix. How do we gain stage EQ? We want our gain going into the EQ to be the same as volume outward. Let's dive into the DAW and show you how this actually works. So let's continue to work on our vocal here and we're going to be just adding some generic EQ to the vocal to clean it up a little bit before we continue on with our mix. So let's dive in here. It's not too much. 
not stupid, and I'm fine, no. I thought it's a little nutty, so I'm gonna take out some of this, you know, six hundred, maybe. It's not too much, stupid, and I'm fine, no. I thought you weren't done with me, so never mind. I don't care. Bring a little bit of brightness on those vocals. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. All right, that, that sounds great. We're already moving forward with our vocal. And now our job is to gain stage this. So we want to make sure that uh, the volume or the gain going into this is the same as going out. I'm going to use peak volume for this example because EQ, again, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to listen to it first or look at the meter volume first without, and then with, and then see what I need to change. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine. So the peak is at minus 10. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine. And now it's at minus 12, so I can gain this up with the gain here by two decibels. And that should be equal power now before and after. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. All right, perfect. That is how you gain stage your vocals. So now we can do before and after. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me. So now I can decide if that actually sounds better or not. This is how we do gain staging for EQ. Very simple. You can just use peak volume. Uh, make sure you're doing this though. Again, one, to make sure that we're maintaining our volume balance from the beginning, but then also to maintain integrity of the EQ itself to make sure that we actually made a good move because again, we don't want to be biased because it's louder after the move. Um, versus before. So now let's move on to gain staging compression. This is where it gets really confusing potentially. So make sure you're paying attention. If you're taking notes, get out that notepad um, and make sure that we're paying close attention to the detail of compression. So at the core of it, right, our goal is the same. We want the same gain as volume going out. So the main question is, do we use RMS or peak with compression? And the ultimate answer is it depends based on the goal of our compression. So just a quick review on compression is compression is going to be changing the transient or the tail volume and the relationship between these two pieces of a signal or the peak and valley to use simple terms. We can either decrease the transient or we can increase the transient. This is the important point to make when we're thinking RMS or peak volume for compression. If we're decreasing the transient volume, we want to use peak volume as a rule of thumb. So this would be thickness type compression and consistent type of compression. Uh, if you're not aware of these four types of compression, there will be a link down in the description to view my video on the four types of compression and how to create those and how to use those in your mix. So go ahead and check that out if you're confused about these types of compression. But essentially, if we are decreasing the transient with our compression, we should be using peak volume as a rule of thumb for main elements. For if we're increasing the transient, we want to use RMS. So this would be the average volume. So we want to use average volume for punchy type compression or groovy type compression. We are increasing the transient. The exception to this rule is depth. If we are trying to create depth with our compression, then we want to throw that out of the window and only use RMS. So Again, when in doubt, RMS is a safer option to use for everything. The reason why this is applicable is because if we're trying to create distance with thickness type compression, then we want to make sure that we are using RMS only because that's going to increase the perceived distance because if we're turning up the volume but decreasing the transient, then it's not really actually going to increase the distance and the perception of distance with that type of compression. Versus punchy and groovy type compression, we're trying to increase the transient, but we want to make the tail stay the same. So it's the same overall loudness, average loudness that we perceive, but it's perceived as closer because it's a little bit more punchy, a little bit more in my face. If in doubt, 
use RMS with compression. It's just a safer bet overall. And again, if you want to learn more about those four types of compression, then you can go check out the video. This is the thumbnail for that video. You can go check out the only four ways you can use compression. Again, there's a be there will be a link in the description of this video. All right, so I'm going to dive into the DAW really quick and just show you exact a couple examples of how to use uh, how to gain stage compression. So let's all right. So let's use a couple vocals as the example, and I'm going to show you exactly how I would use those this kind of intricacy of if I want to create distance with compression, what would I do and how I would measure that when it comes to gain staging specifically. So gain staging with our compressor here with our lead vocal. Again, the lead vocal is a main element and I'm going to be using some consistent type compression initially to, to just further control some of those dynamics that I wanted to that I didn't really capture with the gain staging specifically. So let's dive into this. I've just set up some basic compression with this. I have really fast attack, uh, relatively slower release to ensure that I'm using more consistent type compression. Let's dive into actually gain staging this. So I'm going to re reduce this until I'm getting about, you know, three to four decibels of gain reduction. Then we'll gain stage it here real quick. And this is not so much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. And this is not so much to pretend I'm fine, no. All right, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some peak volume again because it's the... I'm using consistent type compression. I want to use, I'm decreasing the transients. And so I want to use peak volume to make sure that those, those peak transients are making up back to where they were originally. So without this compression, it's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. It's at minus 10. So that's what I want to hit with the compression as well. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. So it's at minus 10, it's at minus 12 now. So it's about two or so decibels of makeup gain that I need to add back in. And this is not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. And that's all it is. That's as easy as that. The main elements. Again, if I was using a groovy type compression where I'm actually increasing those transients, then I would use average volume instead. So I want to use an average. Uh, I want to use an example of average volume um, when that would actually come into play using these uh, background vocals here. Where here we go, using these two here. So we're going to be adding some compression here. I'm going to be using some thickness type compression. So that's going to be a fast attack and a fast release to only basically capture just those transients, the loud part of those notes, to squish them down a bit. So let's dive in. Auto gain off and not too much to pretend I'm fine. I thought you were done with me. And I don't care if you say I do. Cause I was already moving up. Alright, so I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive than I normally am. Um now let's pull up our multimeter. So on the far right here is the peak versus RMS, so you can kind of see both measurements there. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. But we're gonna be looking at this uh this peak versus RMS value here. So here's without not too much to pretend I'm fine. So the RMS is minus twenty-five. So remember that? Not too much to pretend I'm fine. Not too much to pretend I'm fine. So minus 30. So we want to make up by about four or so. Not too much to pretend I'm fine. Essentially, the goal was to make it thicker, but reduce the transients. And so there's like a very, very slight sense of depth that's being added with these vocals here. So here it is in the context of the lead and harmony vocals. It's right. not too much to pretend I'm fine. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine. All right, so that's two quick examples of how I would use peak versus RMS volume when comp when using compression specifically. Again, when in doubt, just use average volume. It is a safer measurement to use. Last one is gain staging. We want to gain stage effects. So let's dive into the DAW and show you exactly how to do that. So using the same example that we've been using, this vocal, we want to add now some effects. And again, this is very similar to what we've already been through. We want to measure before versus after we add some effects. Let's just do some generic distortion and show you exactly how we do this. Uh, no, not distortion. Let's, 
Uh, let's use some overdrive. And this is not too much. And this is not too much to pretend I'm fine. No, I thought you were done with me, so never mind. I don't care if you say I do. No. All right, so I've added some some overdrive here. Let's see what we are before and after. And this is not too much to pretend I'm fine. Minus 22. And this is not too much to pretend I'm fine. So it looks like a one decibel. And it's not too much to pretend I'm fine. There we go. Perfect. So now we can basically A B this and tell if we actually made a good change or not. And it's not too much to pretend I'm fine. No. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. Alright, so you know it's a little crunchier. I'm not sure if you like that. Um I'm kind of I can go either way on that one, but ultimately that's exactly how I would use this in the context of effects as well. Um, I generally don't gain stage delay or reverb very much because that's sent to a specific uh, bus outside of that. I might someday, but at this point I, I really don't mess with that that much. Um, I will occasionally adjust the vocal volume if you know, those additional delays do bump it up too much in the mix, but generally it doesn't make a material difference to my mixes. And so I don't really bother having gain staged that section of the mix, but everything that goes on the channel itself, I am definitely gain staging to ensure that I'm maintaining that volume balance all the way throughout the mix and ultimately end up with a really nice controlled mix bus that I can feel safe exporting for the mastering process. If you found any of this helpful, then don't forget to pick up the objective mix. Uh, there's a link down below in the comments and also in the description of the video if you're interested in getting this. It's, again, it's only $5, less than a Starbucks cup of coffee. So if you want to learn my entire objective mixing framework and my entire mixing process to always get professional tracks, then go ahead and check it out down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.